In this uh, townhouse, I set up my studio. The townhouse consists of five uh, stories. Each floor actually would run about 100 feet long. And each floor was divided between two large rooms. At the center, you have the bathroom and the kitchen. And then the townhouse. I used to have my studio on the first floor upstairs. The first and second came joined as an exhibition space. Now this was a very crucial time period of so many goings on. I moved here only a year after the Arab-Israeli war and while the Vietnam War was raging and being the subject of sit-in, disconnect, and constant demonstration. And of course we had the events in Paris of May 68. The New York art scene reflected uh, at the time various uh, different artistic styles, the academic, realist, representational, abstract, conceptual, and uh, it was sort of weighing toward uh, a lot of uh, pop art, with the presence of noted artists like Rauschenberg, uh, Jasper Jones, uh, Andy Warhol, Lichtenstein, Wesselman, Oldenburg, Jim Dunn, and others. It also had a strong presence of uh, the earlier period, uh, the abstract expressionist uh, movement that pioneered uh, with uh, artists like uh, Jackson Pollock, uh, William de Kooning, Franz Klein, Mark Rosco, Philip Custone, and of course the uh, famous teacher uh, Hans Hoffmann. A little bit of work at that time, it wasn't too much, but I took interest, I liked uh, Clifford still. And of course there was, uh, along with the f field painter, were a lot of exhibits by famous artists of all schools and styles. Uh, exhibition that uh, I enjoyed attending and, uh, and met uh, various artists. Uh, like the show at Nodler, I recall when I met uh, Salvador Dali, another show here at Derenberg, uh, Norman Rockwell, another show. Uh, Warhol had a great presence. I used to run into him almost everywhere. And just, he's always carrying his cameras and taking pictures. The location of my city here was really at the center of artistic activities. And so I was still not, uh, not known as an art center. I was living, of course, I was spending a lot of time in Greenwich Village and, while attending NYU, but so I was still not really uh, what it is today. Major art galleries were, were along uh, Madison Avenue here only a few steps away from the auction house Sotheby, at the time it was called uh, Park Burnett, was down the street. And uh, I went uh, frequently there, look at art, especially on weekend, usually on Sunday. And sometimes uh, purchased uh, a work, a good bargain. Also down uh, the Carlisle Hotel with its Piano bar was always uh, an attractive place uh, to to go meet with friends or have a drink, to chat. And the Metropolitan, the Frick, the Guggenheim, and many art museums were only a few blocks away. The Whitney, the Whitney Museum, which you see here, is was only a block behind my my studio. From my window, see the top. The Whitney was a great place for showing uh, what's going on. I mean, they had uh, whew, lots of exhibition of new works of so many New York artists. There I saw the works of pops and conceptual, abstract, realist, and, and photorealist. And uh, every time I met someone, uh, some interesting artist, thing, I would invite them to my studio and should invite the other people in the art world that I meet. So I kept a close watch of what's going on in, in art, and particularly uh, what the Whitney was showing. I would make posters that uh, would draw attention to 
work I do in reaction or response of what's going on in terms of uh, style or subject. For example, in this show somewhere I refer to realism or photorealism, I post over read uh, beyond realism. Abstract expression was kind of interesting. I, mean, I like this name, abstract expressionist, and I uh, made a post uh, in which I made in my work <laughs> figurative expression. Early exhibition, I mean all of my work, especially those exhibitions, were loaded with uh, figurative imagery, the subject of the human figure, uh, the nude and various subjects. From my early career, I was drawn toward a wide range of work, especially Grunwald, Herodius Bosch, El Greco, Goya, of course Goya, Goya, I never special affinity of that. And then the 19th century romantics uh, like Delacroix, Jericho, Jacques Louis David, uh, Turner, uh, David Caspar Friedrich, uh, and then down to Gauguin, Mengo, the Foes, Kandinsky, Kirchner, and all the Mackey, Rouault, and various, uh, especially German expressions along with the French uh, folk. Here near my uh, studio, I went to several galleries where I saw a wide range of works of different styles. Among them, several, actually. Uh, of many of the artists, like Rouault or like Nolde, I saw a lot of other covers of Nolde. They were so impressive. So as my work evolved, I began to use uh, intense colors and then went into the large canvases, especially when I started doing the series on, uh, on Vietnam, on the war. Uh, they were done around uh, 73 and 74. The compositions were really rather uh, quite elaborate, uh, formulated for the theme, and, uh, bringing together you know, the technique, the subject, and the scale. The, the installation would create the kind of environment that would entice and engage the viewer in uh, a dialogue uh, with the work. Uh, one exhibition uh, of the war painting, especially on Vietnam, uh, took place in 73-74, when suddenly a terrible problem began to appear and uh, brought about uh, unfortunate events that uh, disrupted my work and forcing me to close the studio and to place uh, all my paintings and a decades' work into various storages. <laughs>